Hello dear friends and welcome again to Adventure Story Channel videos. Today my dear friends we will talk about fuel booster pump of MIN BMW 7S80ME. First of all we will see our demonstration as always we will see the aspects together but you must always know that every time you will make overhauling the same equipment you will see something else and you will see something new to improve that is true. So let's move on and let's pick up our fuel booster pump. So it's exactly the same procedure as the actuator. There is some nuts that we will need to remove. For sure the hydraulic nuts will be different because the sizes of the threads is also different. High pressure tubing joint on the top cover will be removed. And this is the two bolts that holds the top cover. Now we will set this tool and I will for sure will share you a image from this kind of tool and how uh, the guys from the dry dock team uh, make this kind of overhauling. That was exactly what they did. But first of all, they remove all the piping and isolate the fuel. All the isolatings of the fuel was managed by me. So what he does here, uh, this is some kind of lapping, or why why he doesn't like that? Ah, he screw it inside, so they will be removed all together. It's really really interesting that one. So as you can see, we have the body of the fuel booster. This is the special tool for lifting for the boost plunger. So it will be lifted all together. So now by lifting the top cover, the booster plunger will be staying down. Really, really simplified. All the parts are simplified, so it will be much much easier for any kind of overhaulings here we will remove also the suction valve this kind of valves it's really really important to be inspected and to be in good condition you can see also the sealing surfaces and as i have seen we had only one suction valve on board the vessel so by removing the chunk now the disc can be removed and also the spring and then uh, the shaft with the ceiling surfaces also can be removed as you can see they are fully overhauled and also for sure there will be some procedure for lapping or for uh, rectifying as i have told you before we will see together all these manuals and all these videos oh hydraulic piston it's really really massive and as we can see, there is two O-rings inside, which makes the seal. So neither the fuel, neither will oil will enter each other. There is also the sealing ring, and also the inner sealing rings of the cylinder block will be removed. And also there is some sealing uh, rings down there. It's not so small overhauling, but we will do it. We cannot uh, making uh, otherwise. Okay, let's start. Let's start first of all with uh, the disassembly procedure. Okay, here we are. First of all, I will open all the panels I need it. Next, I will select this tool here and I will try as much as possible reach closer to our uh, equipment.
here we are our pump is ready out and like this we can deliver our pump to <coughs> to dry dock okay back and we will lift all together the cover and the plunger two sets of o-rings we will use and also here we will remove all our equipment okay and now we can place back here and pull our top cover in one vessel I remember uh, which I was working as apprentice engineer uh, what we did we remove the cylinder uh, the fuel pumps top covers and we replace them because uh, MIN changed the design and they have found some kind of uh, damages some pieces was broken and entering the fuel line this was really interesting job and I remember that all these uh, top covers, which was pure metal, was like this metal, we discard it at sea, as I remember. And it was really, really bad situation because all this metal can be reused and there is a lot of lack of uh, proper handling the metal pieces on board. I believe if uh, there is be some kind of uh, scrapping uh, services they really really will take a lot of uh, metal from this kind of uh, from this kind of uh, materials it's really really a lot of materials retained on board because uh, as we know there is a lot of spare parts remain old spare parts motors which was burned previously and really really uh, it's a lot of things and stuff Okay, we remove our o-rings and lastly we remove these uh, ceiling rings in which uh, the fuel booster pump lies on so let's go for the assembly procedure directly I believe I make as much as possible quickly so we will uh, make our movements again in the opposite side all the items are here first of all I directly will manage uh, my spare parts and I will start from where I have been uh, stop it another thing that my dear friends I like to share with you is that uh, here okay we will have a different uh, other assembly it will start from here 
So the program show us that we need to start from this one, this step. And I'd like to share you some uh, very, very important thing about uh, the overhauling procedures and what I have seen on board with the vessels also. I have seen many, many of people try as much as possible to finish in the same day. But uh, what is happening? Uh, the one thing that is happening is that you overload yourself by staying a lot of hours uh, on the engine room, inside the engine room. And with this, you only increase the fatigue through the time. If you have a voyage and this kind of uh, overhaulings that you are making are not so, let's say, not, no, we cannot say important or not, but if it's not so much a emergency situation, it's not necessary really, my dear friends, to stay more than uh, have to stay. Because the jobs, as we know, they are never finished and really we can continue our job without uh, any problem uh, tomorrow. I have seen many, many chief engineers apply this technique and the people stays around to, uh, let's say, they are staying for uh, 10 or 11 o'clock just, let's say, for cleaning or something else, uh, which really, really doesn't uh, matter at all, whatever they are doing, because uh, we have seen people uh, cleaning until 11 o'clock, and tomorrow everything will be dirty again with uh, the dust like that and really all the effort that uh, the staff are doing uh, was really really uh, for nothing so try to manage as much possible a uh, proper your crew because this is that matters you will reduce the fatigue and also your crew will be able to work in case that something uh, emergency will happen. Many, many times also uh, this increase the fatigue of the personnel which are uh, working on board. And also uh, this is very, very bad effect because the people will be tired for nothing, for nothing. And then when you will need them in the emergency, they will not have any power to uh, provide because uh, they will be already exhausted, not only in the mind, but also uh, on the body. As we know, and as, as I have seen with uh, my experience through the time, the fatigue it's a accumulative effect and really really it's accumulated uh, with this kind of uh, this kind of diagram is going like this if the conditions are not proper on board the vessel and in the most cases really really uh, what we faced on board, it's really, really uh, difficult conditions because most of the times you will not have any assist uh, from anyone. Sometimes uh, you'll be able to work even alone. And this is really, really a bad situation uh, of working on board the vessel. Okay, some companies that they like hi high standards, they will try as much as possible to select uh, the crew with good criteria. Okay, we'll place there our ceiling rings. And this is must be done, I believe uh, the crew must be selected very, very carefully because uh, they are the one who will make the job, 
who will communicate with the people that you have been uh, provide for the current job and this is the people who will also uh, in the future will learn your uh, newer stuff and will apply the technology and the proper communication with uh, all the staff and all the crew and they will uh, share the knowledge these people will not come only for uh, one contract and uh, leave they will stay there and they will like whatever they do and thus this will increase the productivity for sure and also the will help the proper uh, management at all this is really really important and i have seen many many companies have this uh, lack because the persons that uh, are involved there they are not even involved in marine industry for a long time and also they have lack of knowledge uh, because they do not know exactly how a ship is working and what to expect from uh, the crew so here we are here we have finished our assembly and disassembly procedure of fuel booster pump thank you my dear friends that you have stayed tuned to adventure story channel and don't forget to subscribe and press your bell button see you in the next videos bye bye my dear friends